Hello again, everybody. I'm Jamie. And I'm John. And this is the Elvis Archival Preservation Society. If you're a big Elvis fan like us, this is your society, our society, the EAP Society. Uh, we've talked about a lot of different subjects. I know I say this every video, but uh, we're going to delve into something that is absolutely near and dear to both of our hearts. Something that we grew up on was one of the coolest things. Like, as a kid, two of the coolest things that, that I ever owned, and I know this was the case for you because we've talked about this, yeah. uh, were the Eugene dolls, which were like Barbie style or Barbie doll sized uh, Elvis dolls. Uh, which were very well made, but the cream of the crop, the king of the mountain, when it came to this stuff, was definitely the world dolls. Yes. And uh, we just learned from this little tag here that the world doll was actually a division of the Eugene Doll Corporation. So they were made by the same company, which Makes is sense. why they look so similar. Exactly. Yeah. Because that's I always thought, oh, yeah, they, it looks like very much the same kind of head uh, and both were both are very very good. The world doll is one of the absolute best. If anybody had these things, I mean, they were not extremely cheap, but for what you got at the time, truly incredible. And the lady that did these was a master. It's it's actually it's a it's a real shame that we did not get a chance to talk to her. Before yes. she passed. I mean, she's been gone for a little while now. Yes, the sculptor who uh, sculpted Elvis uh, was a lady named Joyce Christopher. She was kind of a, she's kind of a legend in the uh, doll making business. She uh, started her career really working for Mattel. And um, she's famous for, uh, I'll just read this part. It says, yeah. um, her first assignment was to design the faces of Barbie's circle of friends, Christy, Brad, and Ken's new face. Now, there was a big shift from the original Ken in 1961 to the 1967 head. Joyce Christopher designed the 1967 Ken head. So wow. if you've ever thought that the Elvis Eugene dolls looked kind of like a Ken, that's why. There you go. Um, later, she would uh, she would be the one who sculpted Stacy, Bar Barbie's English friend. And uh, then she uh, sort of went off on her own in 1971 and worked as a freelancer. She was responsible for sculpting a lot of the Star Wars toys that came out in the 70s. Really? Yes. And um, she also got the assignment to sculpt Elvis for the World Doll Corp Corporation. She said Elvis was one of the hardest challenges that she had ever undertaken. And she spent over 800 hours just sculpting the head of the Elvis world doll. Yeah, this is a picture of her sculpting that. And you can see in the background some of the photos that she used. Um, uh, no, not, not in not Oh, in not in these, that one? Not in these pictures. Yeah. We're going to get to that. There, there you go. go. The photos she was using for reference to sculpt Elvis's yeah. head. And I got to say, as someone who is massively critical of attempts to sculpt Elvis and has even been so on this program. Yeah. She nailed it. Yeah. This is absolutely the best sculpt of Elvis I've ever seen. Yeah. These dolls look like Elvis. They look like him from every direction. Now, it's obviously a stylized doll version of Elvis. Sure. But within that context, she absolutely nailed it. Yeah. It's so good. So, so good. The, um, let's see, limited edition doll series. Uh, yeah, Joyce Christopher. Uh, widely recognized in the doll industry, uh, her superb translation of the Marilyn Monroe doll, which was produced by World Doll Incorporated in 1983, further enhanced her, re her reputation. Her latest work for World Doll, the 1984 Elvis Presley doll, is the most original and dramatic portrait celebrity doll pr produced to date. World Doll, unlike many commercial doll companies, is proud to give credit to the designer of these portrait dolls, Joyce Christopher. Mrs. Christopher has had wide experience in portrait dolls, and the celebrity dolls that she's created in the past are among the best ever produced. And that is absolutely the truth. Yeah. She did a masterful job. I mean, it stands the test of time. There are dolls like the... There have been there have been some pretty good dolls, the Barbie Loves Elvis, the Hasbro, and some of those others. None of them, to this date, none of them have captured Elvis from every angle. I mean, again, stylized for the doll world, and that's okay. Uh, 
for 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 this style, it's absolutely immaculate. Now you you see the pictures, you see how good uh, these were, and you see issue number three of the Elvis uh, Presley Limited Doll Series. As of this printing, World Doll is considering using either of these specially designed Elvis Presley costumes. At the left is the model called the Tiger. At the right is the Flame. One of these designs will be the final costume. I love that we got the flame. It's a shame we didn't get the tiger. Uh, I love the tiger. Oh, so this was. Uh, I guess this was the first one they did. Um. Yeah, I'm not sure in terms of a sequence how they came out, but yeah. we wound up getting six different iterations of the world doll. Mm-hmm. We've got four of them here. We'll talk about the other two, but we're going to show off the four that we have. Yes. Uh, this one right here is referred to as Super Gold Elvis. <laughs> and um, it's kind of a version of the tapestry suit yeah. from February of 70. I call, I, I, we always call this the wheat. Yes. Uh, it always had, like, as it, as it looks like wheat, uh, the design. But look at that. Look at the amount of, look at the amount of detail in this. This looks like Elvis from every freaking angle. Oh, absolutely. And the, the the head shape is timeless enough that this could be Elvis from any time from 1969 all the way up to 77, I would say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, he didn't quite look uh, like that in 1977, <laughs> no, but it's close not, enough. Not, not so much. I mean... It's it's a basically it's a general seventies generic seventies head yeah generic seventies head and but so good and it's interesting to see the shots that she used because I would have thought this was based on like the press conference in sixty nine press conference is what we both said yep. but she actually had photos from it happened at the World's Fair that yeah. she was looking at and you know what I mean if you take away if you take <laughs> take away if you take away the the hair and the sideburns. You can totally see it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, you know what would be interesting would be to 3D scan the yes. face. 3D scan the face and change the hair, and you could probably have just about any. Any Elvis, yeah. That's, I mean, it would have been, oh, it could be incredible. We also need to show off this picture that shows the different jumpsuits that yes. they were going to make for these things. Look at that. Yeah. Oh. Very cool. Yep. And, and we said this, there's another video we were talking about this, but um, the... Uh, there were people, there were fans in Memphis who actually sold uh, and made like homemade uh, jumpsuit costumes and things. Um, and uh, there's a there's a story, and I said this in another video, but I'll say it, I'll repeat it here. Uh, she was in the back sewing, and she wasn't done with it yet. She was almost done, and so in the meantime, she had Elvis naked sitting in the window of room at the days in with a towel over him and uh i kind of went um and we were you know and then another guy uh, there was a um a, an elvis impersonator walked up and he's kind of like does that look morbid to you and like yeah <laughs> and so the, the the lady saw that we were standing there looking and she's like oh yeah well, i'm making i'm just about done with this jumpsuit for the world for the world doll and we're like Oh, and the guy said, and you know, apologies in advance, this is just what he said. He goes, oh, he goes, I, I kind of thought this was like autopsy Elvis or something. He's like, he's like, <laughs> just like, yeah. So we both, we both had the same kind of reaction when we saw it. I was like, okay, that's a little morbid. But no, she just wasn't done with the, with the, uh, with the jumpsuit. But these jumpsuits uh, don't tend to hold up too well over time. This one actually held up remarkably well. I think this is the one I played with the least. Yeah. Um, the uh, the jumpsuit uh, is kind of like a vinyl type material. I think they used PVC in it because it tends to break down, especially in the heat. Yes. And I had the Silver Phoenix doll, which we will get to in a minute. And... I, it would, if it got stuck against something, would take off a little bit of the black of the suit, and so you'd have white splotches all over it. Yep. That's the uh, the one flaw in these dolls. I tell you, one thing that shows you how well Joyce Christopher's work holds up is if you compare this head to the head on the 1987 Star Enterprises Elvis in Concert doll. Yes, indeed. I'm pretty sure whoever 
constructed that one was uh, was looking at the Joyce Christopher head mm -hmm. when they made that head. And if you see the Elvis in concert doll on its own, it looks just fine. Yes. But if you see it next to a world doll, it's like, oh, yeah. they, they missed it a little bit. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Let's see if I can, uh, I'm going to undo. This is the one, because I loved the different looking jumpsuits. This was the doll, this was the doll and you can see by all of the wear and tear, this is the one I I I just I used the heck out of this thing. It was this was my this was by far my favorite of the dolls. And now that he's not strapped in anymore, I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the Silver Phoenix was the one of these that I had as well. It's a a classic jumpsuit from 1975. The head sculpt does not look out of place with the Silver Phoenix. It actually doesn't. Uh, I don't know what happened to the belt. <laughs> is, <laughs> is it losing its, its elasticity? It's a, a little, a, a little loose, um, and not uh, a bad replica of the belt. No, I, actually, it's not. They did, you know, excuse the 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 wear in the in the pants area, but yeah, but I mean, it just it looks so cool, and the design of the Phoenix itself, you can see. The only thing is it doesn't have the Phoenix on the back, which is unfortunate. That's right. It's not um, an exact replica. It's not an exact replica. But, I mean, again, though, you know, look at the face. Look at the face on these. It's just that it's just a testament to an, an art, an art, an artiste. Uh, she definitely, there we go. She definitely knew what she was doing with these. And th this one, again, yeah, th this one was my favorite. It's just so different. And honestly, one of the most accurate representations out of all of these. Yeah, I would say uh, so. The, the the flame is really good too. It might it might be a hair closer, but this was just uh, the, it was so good. Actually, yeah, the uh, but yeah, they they did a great job on the belt. Uh, they just did a, a great job on all this. And uh, well, this one does not have <laughs> this one does not have his ring. Uh, like I said, th this one was well. This one was well loved and well played with. Uh, so let me uh, let me strap him back in. But um, uh, these dolls uh, were they, like I said, like we were saying in the beginning. These are from 1984. Uh, they are not hard to find, uh, considering if you if you are looking to collect a set of these, they're not expensive. You can get them for about $20, 20 $30. If you're lucky, yeah, yeah. used. <laughs> yeah, you can find Obviously. them for, yeah, between $20 and $40 a piece. Considering the size of these things, these are large for us today. Right. If you were to buy this from, uh, if you were if you were to buy this from like, uh, if they sold these new from like Big Bad Toy Store, you'd be talking $200 a doll. Sure. Um, and oh, let's grab this one let's next. Let's flame. Next. Yes, we'll say. Or that. as they called it, "Burning Love," Elvis. Burning Good title. Love. It is. It works. It works. It works. And so, there you go. You get to see. Uh, okay, now this one, the the ring is a square oh. ring, and it has EP on it. And uh, there is also an EP on the belt buckle in the middle. Cool. And uh, not an accurate belt for the suit. No, but... not an accurate <laughs> belt for the suit. Not a bad one. No, not a bad one at all. Uh, and so this has Elvis Elvis Presley second in the celebrity collection. Dear fans and collectors, Elvis was a towering figure in the history of popular music. He was the king. His blend of blues, country, and rock earned him an unprecedented 162 gold and platinum records. His life was the stuff of legend, and his music influenced a generation. Elvis was also a great humanitarian. His many benefit performances contributed millions of dollars to charity. Joyce Christopher's expressive port portrait sculpture reaches a new level in the doll maker's art. Her efforts serve as a tribute to this multi-talented artist who will live in our hearts forever. We are proud that all dolls are on permanent display in Graceland's trophy room. Wow. Uh, I don't know about permanent display. I haven't <laughs> seen them in a while, but they were at one time, which is pretty cool. Dear World Doll, we of Graceland are proud to endorse your exemplary reproduction of Elvis Presley. From our initial meeting with your design staff, we have been impressed with the attention to detail and accuracy they have paid to Elvis. We hope, too, the collectors and fans are, are as pleased with their acquisition as we are in endorsing this product. Sincerely, 
Jack Soden, executive director of Chrysler. That's pretty cool. Very cool. Uh, World Doll Incorporated seal, 1980 New York, and it's got the signatures here, 1984 Elvis Presley Enterprises. Sculpture, Joyce Christopher. Painting, Joyce Christopher. Costume design, World Doll Design Group. Package design, Graphic Horizons Incorporated. Molds, NED, Vinyl Doll. Uh, oh, okay, so they list both. NED was the Vinyl Doll. Shader China Doll Incorporated was the Porcelain. Stencils, Spray Foams Corporation, Vinyl. Jewelry and Buckle, uh, Arlen Ornament and Finding Company. Background and Consulting, Graceland Museum, Elvis Fan Clubs. And Relations Group, the Raleigh Group Limited. World Doll, 205th Avenue, Suite 828, New York, New York, 10010. Division of Eugene Doll Co. Incorporated. Very cool. Just really, really, really cool. Uh, and these are absolutely an artifact. And the great thing is, it's 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 kind of it's kind of rare that an artifact uh, is easy to get a hold of, relatively speaking. And so let's see, World Doll Incorporated, World Doll Collector uh, Collector Registration. So you put your information in there. Obviously, you wouldn't do it now. I don't know if World Doll still exists, but yeah. The, uh, but I, I will say, as someone who's had most of the official Elvis dolls going back to the 1957 one, this is the best one. Mm -hmm. This is the best one as far as likeness of Elvis. Yep. A sense of Elvisness, if that's a thing. It is absolutely. I mean, it's one of those things where it's so it's so lifelike that. You see it and you and you want to smile. At least right. I, I do yeah. because you just get the uh, it just it just produces a feeling uh, that is so yeah. it's so rare for a doll to be able to produce a feeling kind of like you know someone is smiling at you like Elvis is smiling at you. <laughs> now, I I've always I've always loved that. Now this one is especially cool. Slightly different head sculpt. Slightly different head sculpt. Very very similar. Also very good. 50 Years with Elvis, and uh, this one, let's see, and this is all, the, all of the information is the same, 21-inch vinyl doll, 50th anniversary commemorative, commemorative issue number four in a series of four, limit 1985 only. These were available for one year. Wow. And this is the one that's in the back uh, in, our, uh, in our set. Uh, this one got a lot of love too, uh, as you can tell, because some of the gold's worn off over here. <laughs> the cape has certainly seen better days, um, and uh, this one you could style. This one you could style the hair, and uh, I mean, it, it, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it, some of it needs a cut. I see that the cape is detachable with Velcro, which I think is a nice touch. The cape is, yeah. I uh, <laughs> we were commenting earlier about how this is sort of a version of the 1974 Eagle. Yeah. But they added a cape to be, make it more like the Aloha suit, so it's sort of a mashup between the two suits. Yeah. It's almost the embroidered Eagle and almost the Aloha Eagle, which is kind of funny. But still, really, really well done. If somebody was, if somebody was exceptionally good at cutting uh, doll hair, they could really, because like if you took some of this and you could, you know, cut it to about that, to about the right height. Yeah. Uh, you could make something that's just absolutely immaculate looking with this. The hair is so good. Even the sideburns. Yeah. Even the sideburns are uh, are actual hair. So, I mean, they spared no expense for these things. I mean, they were, in 1984-85, they were $79 a piece. They were not cheap. Um, but uh, what was $79 a piece? Today, wasn't it wasn't it like a couple hundred dollars yeah it was like 230 dollars yeah 230 dollars uh but just just the vibe this gives off i i just i cannot say enough good things i like his necklace there too <laughs> i do too they did a great job with that yeah and so you know the uh sometime we will see we'll uh compare this to some of the newer stuff and uh see how it holds up Honestly, I don't think anything's. I, I've yet to see anything that's going to beat this. I don't even think anything can touch it. <laughs> yeah, it's just, and it, you know what? And it's not just, it's not just the face sculpt. It's the way the eyebrow, it's the way the eyebrows are painted. Oh yeah. There's uh, just, it's the way the eyebrows are painted, the way the eyes are painted. I mean, um, where whoever did the manufacturing, 
Um, yeah, Joyce Christopher came up with the design for the paint too. I saw. Yes, she thing. did. Yeah. So who, whoever followed and whoever followed that, yeah, did an excellent job of doing so. Totally, they did a great job. And we should talk a little about the couple that we don't have here. Yes, uh, one of the one of the ones we don't have is because I was a little kid and I would probably would have broken it. Uh, <laughs> so my, my my parents said no. Uh, the other one is actually I'm gonna I'm gonna put him put back, him back out. on the set here. Yep. And he'll be back. He'll be back as part of the set. There we go. Um, and the other one is, even as a kid, I knew that this was not a suit that Elvis had. It's called Golden Platinum Elvis. Uh, it looks like a jumpsuit version of the Gold LeMay suit, and it seems that Elvis is wearing some sort of, uh, like, a British aviation flying medal or something. Yeah. <laughs> I, even as a kid, I knew no. The gold suit doesn't go with the seventies. It goes with the fifties. It goes with the pompadour and the no and the shorter sideburns. So, and they did this with the Eugene dolls, the smaller. There was a gold lame version of that, and yeah. I, that was also my I least had, favorite. I had that, right? But I think because somebody gave it to me. Yeah, but um, you knew it was wrong because knew, yep, gold doesn't go with that haircut. Gold does not go with that haircut. And then there's this. Now there are two pictures. So apparently there was. Uh, a prototype mm -hmm. head, which we got to see. Now, this is kind of interesting. They did, as a as a tryout, try one with a proper, well. Bo oh, a tie. Well, yeah. except for the tie. Proper-ish pr Proper, more proper. <laughs> yeah. The, well, actually, you know what? This looks like the Eugene doll. Yeah. Actually, this might be one of the Eugene dolls, um, where they did this kind of a thing instead of, well, no, actually, because they didn't have this. Anyway. Uh, where they did this kind of a thing, um, and it, that's not right either. I, I would have had the same exact re <laughs> reaction. If they just had fixed the hair, it would have been great. Okay, so... Now, the Aloha dolls are kind of a cool story. These were porcelain dolls that were done in a limited edition of 750 units, and they actually shipped with an original ticket from Elvis's Market Square Arena show. I'm speculating that the way they did this was that uh, when uh, the colonel would rent venues or, or reserve venues for Elvis's tours, there would be some sections that, uh, of tickets that couldn't be sold because they would be blocked by the sound equipment. And they probably had a number of them left over from that show that totaled a little over 750. So they said, yep. hey, We'll take those and add them as an incentive for people to buy this really expensive porcelain version of the doll. Exactly. With the Aloha Eagle. That yeah. was the only way you could get the Aloha version of the Eagle. Yes. Now, this is, uh, I think this is an early, this is an early concept uh, version. And so this is the early version. And the second one has actually a marked improvement. Oh, it's, oh, he, here he is on the back. That is definitely better. Um... Not, um, not, I mean, not amazing as far as the suit goes, but for Doll World, that's really, really good. Very much so. And there's stones. They're actual stones. And the and uh, this, I can't tell. If, no, this looks like the same kind of material. As you can imagine, because they only made 750 of these and they were made of breakable porcelain, mm -hmm. fewer of these survive, and they are much rarer and more expensive. They are. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that the ticket itself is quite a collectible these days. It is. It absolutely is. Have you seen any on like eBay or anything like that? A couple. They, they pop up from time to time, but they go for big bucks. Okay. <laughs> like how big? Do you, do you remember? Uh, I don't remember right off the top of my head, but I, in the thousands, I think. Wow. Yeah. But, yeah. But... Uh, honestly, the, the, the porcelain figure is very good, but you don't need to have that in order to have uh, the best yeah. sculpt. Honestly, I think the plastic versions are slightly better. They are. Yeah, yeah they are. The, the porcelain's not bad, but the plastic version is, is better. Um, it's a little smoother, and, uh, and those can be had for dirt cheap. It's like, it, it's criminal. Honestly, it's criminal. It's kind of too bad that they are as inexpensive as they are. But hey, you know what? For uh, new fans coming up that want to check out and have something that's really, really cool, and it's big. I mean, my gosh, how, how often are you able to get something that's this big 
and is that cheap? Exactly. Uh, like like I said, if they were sold today, they'd be you know maybe even three four hundred dollars. And I would say when you factor in shipping and getting one that is in very good condition, yeah, you might spend around what you would have spent back in nineteen eighty four, but still, it's a deal. It is. It absolutely is. And um, but very very cool. Just so good and. I am so happy that I I'm so happy that that I have the ones that I have and um, you know eventually it would be nice to have like a, a full set in pristine condition absolutely just because but uh, these are one of my favorite childhood memories uh, going down to Graceland there are pictures of me with the Phoenix Elvis doll shoved into my shirt because I just took it every it was like yeah. It was like my blanket or something when that year, <laughs> that year in Memphis I was inseparable from that thing, which is probably why it the legs are a melted mess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, just uh, just it's just so cool, just so very cool, very neat. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this little exploration into the world all a brief appreciation we just wanted to say how much we uh still appreciate the accuracy of the head sculpt and yep. the attention to detail in the costuming i uh i don't know about you jamie but i am somebody who always likes the 70s dolls more than the early ones yeah. because nothing is more iconic than elvis in the jumpsuits oh yeah yeah well and you know like i said it would be kind of cool to 3D to 3D scan it and maybe 3D print and see if you could take this and change the hair because the the faces that she used were from the earlier movies absolutely like from the early 60s so you could take that and see if you could make a doll from like it happened at the world's fair so maybe as an ex maybe as an experiment <laughs> not as an any not as any kind of an infringement or anything, but just as an art experiment, it would be neat to see if that would be doable. Maybe we'll do a follow. -up it would that. be interesting. It would be interesting. We could maybe do a process video about. Yeah, it. yeah. that'd be fun. So very cool. But uh, and uh, would love to see more stuff like this uh, come out. If uh, whoever whoever has the license for World Doll, um, if or Eugene, uh, if they still exist. Um, yeah, uh, you can make these again. That'd be cool. I'd be all right with that. It would be very, very cool. Well, especially with today's technologies, with the suits, you can make some pretty accurate, amazingly accurate stuff. Uh, but a 21-inch vinyl doll in 1984 for like 79 bucks, you just, yeah, you can't beat it. And as a kid at the time, it was like the coolest freaking thing I'd ever seen. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Anyway, so... These are definitely an amazing part of Elvis history, and we hope that you've enjoyed our little deep dive and our little thank you into uh, our kind of our appreciation video, as you said, uh, of these amazing world dolls. They're part of Elvis history, and the biggest thing about the Elvis Archival Preservation Society, biggest thing about the EAP Society is we want to make sure that all the pieces of Elvis history are not lost to history. There's so much amazing stuff. And all of the things that you see behind us here uh, are a testament to that. You've got stuff that shared the stage with Elvis. You've got stuff that has to do with his personal life. You've got a letter from Colonel Parker. You've got tapes that a fan made at a concert. You've got promotional items from the movies, promotional items from CDs and everything else. All of it's a part of Elvis history, and we don't want Elvis history lost to history. So if you like this video, if you like what we're doing here, like, comment, share, subscribe. We'd love to hear from you. Find us on social media. We're most active on Facebook and uh, Instagram, but we do have a Twitter account. We're trying to see how to incorporate that as well. And uh, uh, so that is a great way to spread the word. We want to grow the community as big as we possibly can. If you want to help us the absolute most, we would, uh, we would certainly love it. Please become a member. Please consider becoming a member of the Elvis Archival Preservation Society. Go to eapsociety.com, click on become a member. That'll take you to patreon.com forward slash EAP Society. And you can check out all the different membership options. You don't have to go with the biggest membership option. 
The smallest one is there to make it accessible for everybody, but we have the others there just in case there are folks that would like to just give us that much extra bit of support. The more support we can get, the faster we can grow the channel, the faster we can grow everything and all the plans and things that we want to do. Uh, we have uh, great perks for members. You'll get extended videos. You'll get exclusive videos. You'll get all kinds of fun things that uh, only members get. You'll get to see it first. You'll get to see more of it. And there will be certain things that you won't get to see anywhere else. So uh, and that includes some 8mm footage of Elvis from 1976, footage from Graceland in uh, 1979 and Vernon. Uh, and we're always on the lookout for more stuff. We're working on a truly state-of-the-art means of restoring and um, preserving uh, more of that footage that we can share with the members and hopefully eventually get out to other people as well. Um, it's gonna be it's it's gonna be a cool ride and we hope you're there for it. Absolutely. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. We want to hear feedback from you. Uh, if there's anything that you would like to add, anything that we missed, um, anything you would like to see us cover here on the EAP Society, um, we're always open to ideas, and um, we thank you for watching. Definitely. So, very cool. Well, until next time, I'm Jamie. And I'm John. And this is the Elvis Archival Preservation Society. Thanks so much for checking us out. Till the next time we come back to you, be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and always, TCB. My society, my society, here are all the friends I want to see. Don't need no high society to get me where I want to be. My society, yeah, that's for me. Oh, my society, yeah, that's for me. My society